that in This one's over. Yeah. So what's our temperature right now? 77, 79. It should be coming up a little Don't bit. So let's get our discharge up a little bit, get a little flow of all through our pump. Let it run for just a minute. So again, the thermal couple Drop in is coming right off of Drop in Drop the seal. Right. So what do we have now? 786. Seventy-six? Yeah, okay. seventy-eight five. So we've got the six. suction side valve closed. Let's close this discharge valve right here. No, no. This one. This, this seal. Back. And so now we're not going to provide any cooling water to our seal. Let's watch our temperature there. Seven, eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seventy-nine, one, two, okay. so it's slowly rising. So it will just climb on you. So again, heat, heat is not a good thing for our seals. And all right, on a pump, run all day long. Right? Yeah, so think about that. And again, when you're troubleshooting, if you just had a large cavitation issue, Okay, go ahead and close the cavitation there. Let me close the suction valve. Ready? Let's put this back in. Let's watch that. Let's see what happens to the temperature on that when you pump through the cavitation. This thing's kind of long winded. Now it's starting to go. You haven't seen it long winded about yet. <laughs> You want me to seat it or just uh no, just let it cavitate okay. just kind of cavitate. So we lost quite a bit of our flow already. Yeah, we're not going to Alright. Alright. So most of the time you'll see that temperature, temperature is starting to start to increase on that because bit. there's no flow. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm getting at is I want you to remember to check your seals for damage. Okay. Every time you have an incident with your pump. Especially if you're using some nasty hydrocarbon stuff through here, you don't want your seals to go out because they're going to leak right out around the scrub shaft, right? So that's an issue. So you say check them, check them against temperature? So you're not always going to have a temperature gauge installed on them. You right. should see something escaping or dripping out. Okay. okay. Right? That's not right. supposed to be not supposed to be leaking. Got it. Right? They're not supposed to be leaking for your personal monitor. Staying right about yeah. 79 and a half. Yeah, so we lost our floor. We lost the Yeah, so now, again, remember there's nothing in there. Okay. Right. Yep, so go ahead. Open it back up. Yeah, open it back up. Are most seals not supposed to leak by at all? Because there was kind of a tolerance. I mean, some, you know, you walk by, you're like, it's leaking. Well, that's been leaking. We've been watching it, you know, yep. for the last few months. We're trying to achieve uh, zero emissions. That's what we're trying for in a perfect world. Um, a lot of the older pumps that have mechanical pack packing on them, you want them to drip. They need to drip a little bit because they have to provide lubrication through all that packing, otherwise your shaft will actually burn up. You can get a hot spot on that shaft. So you want a little bit of drip. But those are mostly like saltwater pumps or freshwater pumps or bottom of water pumps. It doesn't make any difference. But not hydrocarbons. Not hydrocarbons. Still, yeah, our goal is to not have leaks with them. But it's very difficult, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. But there's some you mentioned here that you're like, really? <laughs> so you can tell the ones that, you know, they didn't like that. Yeah. They could buy. Yeah. The pumps are pumping are really yeah. Yeah. next up. Hey, we're going to write something up right now. Yeah, exactly. Okay? All right. So what do you think, folks? Yeah. All right. Pretty cool. Cool. Let's, let's, let's shut her down. Close our suction valve over there. The DP loan is to normally we go out there. Yeah. They're going to take it back for the four class? Um, they're going to take it back in uh, January, so they're coming back. So usually they don't do it for the four class. Usually they go around to individual units. Oh, okay. But they may. Okay. Yeah, needs a little piece. You're a noisy guy there. No, I just... <laughs> okay, so you got the relationship between your horsepower and your motor. Yeah. Okay, so on startup, it draws a little more. On big pumps, Big motors, we actually have a little set of starting motors to get them going. How come we're still hot? All right. Is it going to still get a reading? Will it It'll probably drop? Die down? It's got a little capacitor or something in there, something right. holding voltage. Don't know. 
Thank you. Um, but so again, remember this inlet gauge, the suction gauge, and that relationship as your pump starts working, all right, and creates this low pressure area here. So you've got to have an idea what to check for if you're out there troubleshooting, trying to figure out what's going on. You should be able to add those clues up. No flow. You're under vacuum over here. Okay. Could be the tank. Could be the suction valve. Could be a clog on the inlet piping. You know, if you just came out of turnaround, there's a hundred things that could okay. be wrong. So I just have to blind in. in right. You know, could be a lot of things. Could be rotation. If you just came out of turnaround, it could be rotation. Wrong way. A 50 chance that they've got a wire backwards. backwards and it's not pulling <laughs> oh. anything. I got you. Okay. I mean, there's, yeah. you know, once you move out of 110, there's no set standard. Every company right. can wire their 220, 440, Three and all that jive. as long as it, it's all consistent within the fence of that company. All right. Huh, you it seems to me why our meter doesn't just die off, but there's yeah. a reason. Okay. Questions? Do you want to the next Yeah, I want these for the next group.